Unlike the other platforms I made for the cats, those narrow ones, this one needs a stronger bracket because it sticks out this far from the wall. I'm gonna have also a, a smaller bracket supporting this side. You'll see that when it's on the wall. But what I'm doing right now is just trying to put together a very rudimentary shelf bracket, no frills. I'm just gonna glue and screw this together. I cut this piece at just a 45 degree angle and I wanted these two pieces to be fairly wide so that, so that I only need the one bracket so I won't have to use two. This angled piece poses a little bit of a problem because I can't really clamp it without the clamp sliding off of it. So what I'm gonna do is just glue this on and let that glue dry for a while just so that it'll grab hold and sort of act like a clamp while I put this, then I can put the screws in. Just wanna draw a line, make sure that I'm centered. One thing about joining plywood together like this is I found that the longer the screw you can use, the better. In here, I'm using these, I think these are two and a half inch long screws. They'll just give it plenty of hold. But of course, you wanna make sure that you drill a pilot hole so that you don't split apart those plies of plywood. Plies. <laughs> Layers of plywood. They're plies. You know what I'm trying to say. Of course, the trick there is make sure that you're going straight into the plywood so that you don't come out at an angle. The other tip I have, and I don't know if this is just me or not, but I find that it really works well when screwing into the edges of plywood is once you've got the pilot holes drilled, drive the screws in pretty fast in all in one motion rather than really slowly. Sometimes, I don't know why, it, it, sh it may just be me, I don't know. I don't know if there's any physics or logic to this at all, but if I drive them really slowly, that plywood seems to separate. So, I just go for it. I haven't experienced that with solid lumber, just plywood. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking this will be strong enough on its own that I don't need to put that little side support over here. I think what I'll do is just install it this way on the wall, see if that seems strong enough, and then if not, I can add an additional support on that side wall. But I think this will do it. And yes, I love the irony of using carpet tape in the workshop for actually holding carpet onto something. <laughs> the Alanis Morissette type of irony. I think if I wrap this, at least the lower part of this trunk, it'll be a little bit easier for the cats to climb up. Obviously, I don't want to wrap the entire tree with sizal rope, but here and there maybe. And like before, I'm just using hot glue to attach this. It works out really well. You know what, one of my favorite YouTube channels is right now, I'm, I'm, set, I'm obsessed with it, is Kitty Soros. If you haven't checked out Kitty Soros, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. In fact, I probably even mentioned this before. I don't know, all these days just kind of blend together. But it's just the, the most charming channel. And it's just, it's this Korean woman who lives in this apartment with, with 10 cats. 
But she like makes little stories with the cats and puts them through little challenges and things and you get to know all the different cats and all their names and it's really, really well done. Really well edited, well thought out, well shot. Anyways, I think that's the best cat channel on YouTube right now, Kitty Soros. But for informative stuff about cats, check out Jackson Galaxy. As far as I'm concerned, Jackson Galaxy is like the world's expert on cats and cat behavior. Like, you wanna know why is your cat making a weird meowing sound? He probably knows why. But if you have cat behavioral problems, it almost always boils down to they just need something to do, which is why this kind of catification is good for cats. It gives them things to do, things to chase after, because they're, they're predators. They need to hunt things. And he always stresses the importance of just playing with your cats. I mean, you've got to spend at least 15, 20 minutes at a time, just aggressive play. We've got one of these sticks that has a feather attached to it. They, they think it's a bird or something, but you spin that around and just it just totally wears them out. And then they're just little angels. Well, that's the first 50 foot rope there, but I was gonna leave like gaps here, but I think I'm gonna have to take the rope up to here because this piece is gonna fit right here and I think they need, <laughs> I think they gotta come through here. So I think what I need to do is take this up to at least there. Okay. I think that's gonna work if, for whatever reason, the cats don't seem to be able to make it up into that. I can always add some more of that rope once it's up in place. Hopefully the cats will be able to climb up here, come through here onto this platform. They can look out the window and then from there, they should be able to jump up, up here. Next, what I need to do is make a platform over here that's only attached to the tree. 